Hi everyone, you're here starting with Cody and Pete, and in today's video we are working exclusively on the Bernina 435 sewing machine. Um, this machine is very similar to um, the Bernina 475, but the Bernina 435 is the first machine in the Bernina lineup. So here we're just going to go over um, everything that we really can go over with this machine. It's going to be kind of an in-depth overview of the Bernina 435. So let's get started. Always remember, if you like this video during any time while you're watching it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram. I'm always posting something new that I'm working on every day. So with the Marina 435, it's an excellent machine. So we do have seven inches from the needles to the back of the throw. We do have that beautiful 4.3 color touchscreen, 900 stitches a minute. We were still working with, so this is the first machine in the entire Bernina lineup that has the Bernina B9 hook with that big jumbo bobbin, so that's wonderful. So this is all the same that we see in just about all of our machines now. So all of our 7 series, the new 5 series, and the 4 series. So I've got a number of videos on this, um, working with the hook system, cleaning, oiling, all that's the same with the 435, just like we saw with the 475. Uh, the 435 is a five and a half millimeter, just like our 475. It comes with full shank feet, which are really easy to take off um, and put new feet and attachments on, especially when we're working with like a buttonhole attachment um, or like rufflers uh, and things like different attachments like that that wouldn't typically require a screwdriver and other brands. Um, our full speed control, our needle up, needle down button. So this will physically bring the needle up or bring the needle down when the foot is down, of course. So I'll bring it down or I'll bring it up. But always remember, if you want the machine to stop in the down position, you tell it on the screen right here. So this, we can click it here. And now, oops, click the right button. This one right here, when we click it here, it's going to show us that the needle's going to stop in the down position when we stop sewing. Uh, if we want it to stop up, we just hit it again. So it comes with a slide on table, just like you see here with all the other four series. Pressure foot pressure adjustment, there's a gauge on the side, and so we can turn it to loosen the pressure foot pressure for uh, bulkier fabrics, or basically thicker fabrics and lighter fabrics, we can reduce the pressure. Um, in the book, it actually gives you some ideas of different types of fabric to what to adjust it to. The one thing the 435 doesn't have that the 475 has is the automatic thread cutter. So that, if you're ever wondering what that button is that you're missing, that would be the automatic thread cutter. That and it doesn't have the ability to uh, use the Bernina stitch regulator. But if those two things aren't important, then the 435's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful for you. Because uh, some people, they don't like using the automatic thread cutter and some are never going to use the stitch regulator. So when we look at our screen, we see everything that we see on all of our other Berninas. We have an automatic thread tension, which will change when we're changing with different stitches. And sometimes when we adjust different stitches, it will adjust our tension as we adjust that same stitch. Uh, but when we select different stitches, it does change it to optimize um, our tension and optimize our stitches. We have the press of foot recommendation right here. So like for this particular stitch, it's telling us our number one foot, which is the universal, it's the reverse pattern foot. I've got a video on that. Um, and I'll have videos on all the different feet as we go through the big book of feet. But like certain stitches require a certain foot, like our overlock foot, which is one of my favorite feet, it's telling you foot number two. If you were to click on it, it will show you a picture of it. And the most recommended foot is going to be the one in the top left hand corner with that big yellow star. Here is just our pressure foot pressure. So when we click on it, because it's a manual adjustment, it's just going to show you where it is and what it looks like and how to adjust it all on the screen. So even though it's a manual adjustment on the side, we can figure out how to change it and for what by clicking the pressure foot pressure adjustment, uh, well, the, the button right here on the screen. The next one we see here is a very important one. This is our security settings. So when we're working with um, different twin needles, you can tell it what size so you can put those restrictions on. Also, if we are using the optional zero millimeter stitch plate, we can tell it and you'll see it turns yellow right here. And when we tell it, what it does is it puts in restrictions. So right now, 
if I try and do a zigzag, it won't let me because it thinks I have the zero millimeter stitch plate on. So all I can do is a straight stitch in the center needle position. So let's turn that off so we can see other things. And here's just showing that our feed dogs are up. So to lower our feed dogs, we do free motion quilting, for instance. There's a button right on the side. So if I click on it, I'll actually show you. So it shows a little video. So to push it all the way in to the point where it's stuck in, that lowers our feed dogs. One thing to always remember is to re-engage our feed dogs, you click it again so the button pops out but the feed dogs aren't going to pop up like they pop like they dropped when you first press the button in but you just turn the hand wheel on you just turn the hand wheel on the side a little bit and the feed dogs will pop up or if you start sewing before that needle even comes down into your fabric um, the feed dogs do pop right back up so don't be concerned if they when they don't pop right back up when you do engage the feed dogs and down here, the little bobbin. This is just going to tell us how to put a bobbin in the bobbin case, basically. So this machine does not have a bobbin sensor, so it does not detect how much thread is on the bobbin. You don't get that until you go to the Bernina uh, 570 um, before it adds that bobbin sensor. But here it gives you a little visual of how to put the bobbin in the bobbin case. And just like with all of our Bernina machines now, with the exception of our three series, we have our multifunctional knobs. And these is, this is how we change and adjust our stitch width and our stitch length. So they're called multifunctional knobs because depending on where you're at, you, um, they, may be, they may do different things. But right now, they're just stitch width and stitch length. And followed by our needle position buttons. These are wonderful. So with a Bernina, you can adjust your needle position with any stitch. So right now I've got a zigzag that's four millimeters wide. So I can move that stitch over to the left or over to the right a little bit. It's almost at its maximum capacity because like I said, this is a five and a half millimeter stitch width machine. So it can't be made too much bigger. But if we try, we can go all the way up to that five and a half. And that's about as, and that is as big as it will go. We can definitely go smaller. And by going smaller, it allows us to move our needle position even more. The buttons that we see on the side here, our home button, our question mark button, and our clear button. So the clear button, uh, it's a common misconception. Um, a lot of our customers think when they hit the clear button that they'll t it'll take them back to their straight stitch. It does not. The clear button clears the settings that we changed. So right now we can see because everything's in yellow. So our stitch width, our stitch length, and our needle position are in yellow. So that means we've changed them fr from the default. So the clear button will clear all that back to the default setting. It does not take us back to our straight stitch, it only clears the settings. In order to go back to a straight stitch, you have to go back to the straight stitch. You have to click on the straight stitch in order to go to it, just like any of the other stitches. The question mark button is really handy. So what that does is you can click it at any point. The screen will kind of highlight in blue and a little blue question mark will appear in the center of the screen. So what this does is it allows us to click on any button that we see on the screen. Like for instance, this one. And it will tell us about it. Some things will have more information than others. But especially some of the stitches, because some of the stitches have specific functions, like our utility stitches we see right here. So if I click the three, it's going to tell us it's a very overlock stitch. And it'll tell us like what type of fabrics and uh, application you would be doing with that particular stitch. It's a one-time use button, so by clicking on it, we can click one button on the screen at, the, at that moment, and then when we exit out of it, we would have to click on the question mark button again if we have more questions about other buttons. The home button. So the home button brings us to a whole other screen. So for some of you who are familiar with um, like a five or a seven series, this is also how, we would, well with the five series at least, this is how we would also go back and forth between um, sewing and embroidery. But here since this machine just sews, we just have just a sewing function. And that's also how we'll get out of that screen. But by going back to here, we can see there's multiple more, there are multiple icons down here at the bottom. So we have our echo mode. This will just kind of put our machine in hibernation mode. So this is excellent if you need, want to go have some lunch or go and 
press some fabric for a while. And what it does is it just powers down the machine a little bit. So it turns off the lights and makes the screen inactive until you hit the echo button again. Um, so what it does is by doing that instead of turning off your machine is when you turn off your machine, it erases any of your settings you have temporarily saved or basically your temporary altered stitch memory, which I'll get to in a second. But other buttons we have here is our creative consultant. This is a wonderful, wonderful function. So by clicking here, you can tell it what type of fabric you're working with, say a medium weight knit, and you can say you put it on the zipper. So here it's gonna tell, tell you what type of needle, thread, stitch, what foot, and then you may require some stabilizer. If you hit the check mark, it's gonna change a few of these things for us. So it adjusted our tension because we are working with the knit. It changed the foot to work with the number four, which is our zipper foot and it increased the stitch length and moved our needle position over. If we weren't on a straight stitch, it would have also changed a to us to a, it would, would have changed the stitch to a straight stitch. So the creative consultant is wonderful. The other option, the other icon we see here, the little book, is kind of like our on-screen manual. So this is where it has our on-screen instructions. So if you have questions about buttonholes, techniques, or threading, like if you have questions about winding the bobbin, it's going to show you a little video. They can't make it any easier. It's wonderful to have all these functions right built into the machine. So you don't have to pull out your manual. The other one is our settings. So here on the 435, there are a few things you can change. So you can change the noises that the machine makes, like when you click the screen, the beeps. Um, you can change the background color. So if I want to change it to a burgundy and change the background texture, you can change that. You can change the welcome message. We can come here and get a little bit more information about our machine. So if you want to know what version software you're on, how many stitches, that's all found here. But other things we have are some sewing settings and where you can tell the machine that you've oiled it and it'll show you how to oil and lubricate the machine, which is nice. So we can just kind of X out, hit the sewing, and then it'll bring us right back to where we were. One thing to always remember, if you're not familiar, is all the Berninas have what they call temporary altered stitch memory. So what this means is, so right now I'm at a straight stitch, and you can see all these things have been changed. But if I go to like this little honeycomb stretch stitch, and let's say we change it, and let's say if I go back to the straight stitch, all those settings that we changed um, for that particular stitch are still there. You can see there, the tension, length, and needle position are still yellow. That means that we that it kept those temporary altered stitches. So we can go jump from stitch to stitch to stitch, and if we had to make some minor adjustments to accommodate what we're working with, when we go back to that stitch, it remembers all that. So this is why you would put your machine in echo mode, opposed to turning it off if you're just going to be away from it for, for a short period of time. It's not something I would recommend for doing overnight, but if you need to go somewhere do something for an hour or two, and you've adjusted those stitches, and you've got your fabric right underneath your machine, and you don't want to have to turn it off to reset all of that, you can just put it in the echo mode and it'll save all of those things. Some other functions. So right now that's all of what you can see on the screen with the exception of some stitches which we'll get to. But depending on what stitch you're on, they may have other options and other things you can do. And that's what the little eye is. So that little eye right there, so when we click on it, here we have some more options. So let me actually choose just a different stitch so we can see. Okay. So here on the screen, we have our, our mirror image. So we can do a vertical mirror image where it would flip or a horizontal mirror image. But a symmetrical design like this, there is no horizontal mirror image. It's because it's the same. Something else that's really nice is this one right here, the little triangle with the X. So that is our pattern repeat. So if I click on it, it'll add numbers. So right now it's gonna have a little triangle with the number two. So what that will do is it will stitch out two patterns, which are two flowers, and then stop. And right here it will count down as you're stitching. So if we take a look, so one thing I want you to take note is as you're stitching, that little white dot will move across the pattern to show you where you're at in that design. So as you can see, once we finished the two patterns, the machine stopped and stopped with the needle down because that's how we have it set. 
So that's what pattern repeat is, is you can tell the machine exactly how many patterns you want and it will stitch them and then stop. So you don't have an incomplete pattern. It's very similar to this one right here because this is our pattern end. So here, if you know how many patterns you want, you can tell it here up to nine patterns. But here, and it will stop after those whatever number you have set. But the pattern end button, this will, when you click it, it will finish the pattern that it currently is on and then it will stop. But other icons we see here that are available is our reverse. So this is where it will sew permanently in reverse. So if you needed to stitch backwards for a given time that isn't just for a few stitches and you may want to use both of your hands to stabilize your fabric, so you wouldn't want to use your reverse, you can actually have the machine sew backwards. And we know it's going to sew backwards because even on the screen it represents that. It's showing the stitch behind the foot. So one thing I always, I always like to point out with, the Arborne, with all of our Bernina machines with the touch screen, everything we see on the screen stitch wise is to scale. So these flowers that we see on the screen currently, that's to scale. That's the exact size this machine stitched out, which is five and a half millimeters. So we can see our little flowers here. Those flowers are the same exact size on the screen which is so cool. So if you need to adjust the stitch, um, you can see it all on the screen to really get the stitch the size you want without even having to test it out. Other functions is our balancing function. This is not something that most people really ever have to deal with. Um, this is if you have stitches that don't seem to be lining up where they're supposed to with each other um, or they're too far apart. They're just alignments off. And we see this um, sometimes with different types of fabric. So if you were to come here, you would make use these buttons here or the lower knob and you would make this stitch look, how, look like how the machine is stitching it out on that fabric. And it'll make the adjustments so it will stitch out properly. So that's what the balance is. But other icons we see on the side here so currently, this top tab, these are our utility stitches. And see this little arrow right here? If we click it, it will open the entire window to see all of our utility stitches. So these are all stitches with a purpose, as I like to refer to them as. These stitches are stitches that most of them have been around for a very long time, and they're designed to do specific things. You can always hit the question mark button and ask, what are those things? And then they'll tell you. They even give you some ideas of sometimes what feet to use from here and similar stitches. But the next tab here with the little squiggly line, this is our decorative stitch category. So here we have a number of different folders and these folders all contain stitches that are similar to each other from floral to cross stitch to heirloom and to some novelty stitches. So even like the little hedgehog. The next tab are our alphabets. So you can see the three different alphabets that are built into the Bernina 435. They're all there. A common question I get is how, so if I were to just say, if I were to click on it, it would just stitch that same letter over and over and over and over again. If I wanted to stitch a name or a word or a sentence, so if I wanted to combine those stitches, you would want to go to the combi mode. And the combi mode is that plus sign right there. So if I click the plus sign, it bring it kind of, erases what was on the screen. It doesn't necessarily erase, it just is in a different side of the screen essentially. You're in the memory side of the screen now. So if I wanted to, I can even open this up so I can see it a lot better. So I can click A, B, C, and I can even do lowercase numbers and symbols. And so what it's going to do, if I kind of close that window out, it's going to combine those six different stitches as one. So when we go and stitch it out, you'll see the pattern that it's working on will be in blue. And so what you can do when it reaches the last letter that you're working with or last stitch, because you can combine decorative stitches as well. So we're on the last stitch. So let's hit the pattern end button. You'll see a little stop sign appears. And so the machine will stop all by itself 
when it finishes with that particular pattern. Done. Perfect. So we look here and there's our ABC, ABC. Perfect little stitch. So that's our combination mode. So one thing to remember is when you're done with combination mode, you just want to go to back to regular stitching. You have to hit the little plus sign again to get out of combi mode. And then we're back to just regular stitching. And you can go to a straight stitch if you wanted to. And look, it still has all of our settings that we had set because of the temporary altered stitch memory. Now the next tab after the alphabet are our buttonholes. So this is our buttonhole tab. And so these also have some eyelets and the, but on, the but button so on stitch. But it has a number of different buttonholes and they're for different applications. So if you have questions about some of the uh, buttonholes you see, you can always hit the question mark and then hit one of the buttonholes and it'll tell you um, like this particular buttonhole is for stretch fabric. And so when you do select a buttonhole and you want to create a buttonhole, you would hit, let's say this one, and you hit the I. You can come here where it says 16.0 you would click this and here's where you can put your button on the screen and use your multifunctional knobs to change the size of that yellow circle to line up and match the size of your button. So you can exit out of here, put your automatic buttonhole foot number 3A on and just start stitching and it will make a full button hole the exact size it needs to be made. And it'll make them over and over and over again. You just keep moving your fabric to line up where you want the top of the buttonhole to start and it will come down, go up, and then come back down to finish that full buttonhole. The other two tabs are our quilting stitch tab. So these are all your quilting stitches that are built into the 435. This is something that, this is a folder that doesn't have as many stitches as say the 475, because the 475 is the quilter's edition machine. So it comes with a quarter inch foot, it comes with a lot more decorative, or a lot more quilting stitches, and of course the ability to use a Brina stitch regulator for free motion quilting. But it does, this machine does have some quilting stitches, including some hand look quilting stitches, some blanket stitches, some ladder type stitches um, and even just regular piecing stitches. So here like for instance stitch 1302 is nice elongated stitch excellent for quilting just like straight line quilting and then stitch 1303 is a tighter stitch which is excellent for piecing your quilt and we know this not only just because of the size but because we hit the question mark button and we select the stitch it tells you what it is. It's a piecing stitch, a straight stitch, shorter straight stitch used for piecing patchwork. And the last tab is our heart. So if you took a stitch um, and you altered it in a manner that you want to continue to use periodically and you don't want to have to say you don't have to change the settings for that particular stitch every time you use it you can come to your heart and say I want to save that stitch you can hit this center one here with the manila folder and the little arrow going into it and it'll save it onto your machine in a folder and then whenever you want to retrieve that stitch later down the road you can come to the heart tab just like we just did and go and select the top tab that top tab is where we can go and retrieve all of our stitches that we have saved. And of course if you're done with that stitch that you saved or you accidentally saved the wrong stitch or something that just wasn't what you thought it would be, you can always hit the trash can. You can always go and find that stitch in one of those folders you have it saved in and delete it. So that's pretty much the run through of the Bernina 435. There, of course, are many, of other, many other applications and things you can do. A lot of them more technique using the different stitches. And we go over that with a lot of the other machines as well. Um, because just because the video may be on a 475, um, a 535, or other five and a half millimeter stitch with machines, the user interface is the same for all of our Bernina machines. So it makes it a lot easier um, to learn because even though the video may not be on your specific machine, um, the application and the process is pretty much identical. There are a few exceptions with some of the more um, advanced machines, especially some of the ones working with 9mm and our big like 790 machines. They are different in how they work and the screens are also bigger. But I did want to go through a lot of the things with the Bernina 435 because a lot of our customers do have this machine and it's an absolutely wonderful machine um, to work with. 
So as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section below um, what you thought about the video or future videos that you'd like to see. I'm always happy to hear from all of our customers and all of our fan base. And I'm always up for new videos because there are some things that I just don't think about that y'all have questions about or that y'all want to see. So let me know in the comment section below. So hopefully y'all enjoyed and as always, happy sewing.